Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to another video. It's been great to have all the support and to gain all the subscribers that I've been getting over the last few days. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching the videos and I hope you enjoy this one. Today we're going to be looking at an integral problem, but we're not doing much technical integration. It's going to involve a lot more kind of thought and especially understanding of functions given quite little information. So we're given a continuous real function that satisfies the identity f of 2x is equal to 3 times f of x for all values of x that are real. And we're given that the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx is equal to 1. What we're asked to find now is the integral from 1 to 2 of f of x with respect to x, and I'm calling that integral i. We also have quite an important rearrangement of the relationship for the function we've been given, which is that f of x is equal to f of 2x over 3, and we're going to be using that later on. So um, the fact that we've got this relationship here, that f of x is equal to f of 2x over 3, means that we should have in mind that at some point we want to make the substitution u equals 2x. And that when we make that substitution, we want to end up with our target integral i. Now when we do that substitution, our bounds are going to double. So I'm going to start with an integral that has the ideal bounds as half their true value. I'm going to start with the integral from a half to 1 of f of x dx. And observe that this is equal to the integral from a half to 1 of f of 2x divided by 3 with respect to x. And now here presents the u sub that we were speaking about earlier. That's equal to the integral from 1 to now 2 of f of u divided by 6 du. Because of course u being equal to 2x implies that du over 2 equals dx, so we've got to have our extra factor of a half there. So what does that tell us? Well, if our target integral is i, that means that the integral from a half to 1 is equal to i over 6. Okay, well, that's interesting. Given the way that that u sub worked, given that we were doubling, let's try and see how it would work if we did that twice. If we doubled our bounds once and then doubled them again, can we find a recursion here? So we're going to look at the integral from a quarter to a half now. So we've halved again of f of x dx. And it's going to follow a similar format to what we just did. That's equal to f of 2x over 3 dx, which is equal to, now doubling our bound by making that substitution, the integral from a half to 1 of f of u over 6 du. And if we pull that factor of 1 sixth outside our integral, we've ended up with the question that we just looked at again. And we would continue that whole process, we would convert f of u into f of 2u over 3, and we'd end up with another factor of 1 over 6, which means that the integral from a quarter to a half of f of x dx is going to be equal to pi over 6 squared, because we have a factor of 1 6 when we double our bounds once, and we have a factor of 1 6 when we double our bounds again. And you may start to see the pattern that is emerging here. Sorry, I just noticed I wrote a pi instead of an i that the integral from a half to 1 is i over 6, the integral from a quarter to a half is i over 6 squared, and every time that we half our bounds, we have to do this recursive step of multiplying by 1 6, 1 over 6, one more time. So how could we write this in terms of n? That's always what we're seeking to do with these problems. Well, that tells us that the integral from 1 over 2 to the n, because we don't know how many times we've halved yet, we're just going to assume that we've halved n times, to the integral of 1 over 2 to the n minus 1, because of course we want our factor here to be a factor of 2 greater than here, of f of x dx is equal to our integral i divided by 6 
to the power of n. Let's just check that that works. When n equals 1, that gives us the integral of half to 1 equals i over 6, that's correct. When n equals 2, a quarter to a half equals i over 6 squared, that's correct. So we've correctly captured this recursive nature of the problem here. And another thing that we've got to notice is a really nice fact about our bounds that actually is very similar to the last video um, on kind of tricky integral problems that I made uh, that involved the floor function. Let's have a look at what we're integrating between. Well, when n is equal to 1, we're going from 1 to a half. When n is equal to 2, we're going from a half to a quarter. When n is equal to 3, we're going from a quarter to an eighth. And if we take the limit as n approaches infinity, we will eventually reach the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx. And funny that we have that value because we've been given the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx. We know it's equal to 1. So let's capture all this information in one simple line that's going to allow us to solve this problem in a really beautiful way. 1 is equal to the sum from n equal 1 to infinity of this integral, 1 over 2 to the n, 2, 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Because if we sum those areas of 1 to a half, then a half to a quarter, then a quarter to an eighth, then an eighth to a sixteenth, we will eventually just reach the integral from 0 to 1, which is of course equal to 1 of f of x dx, which is also going to be equal to the sum from 1 to infinity of i over 6 to the n. So we can take out this kind of ugly bit in the middle that's quite difficult to deal with, and now we've just got a really simple problem. The sum from 1 to infinity of i over 6 to the n equals 1. Well, we can take out i because it's independent of our variable of summation, which is n. So i times the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over 6 to the n equals 1. Now, given that this is a sum to infinity, and it's a geometric series where we're multiplying by 1 over 6 each time, we can use the formula a over 1 minus r as the sum to infinity. Now, a is our first term, which is 1 over 6, and our common ratio is also 1 over 6, and 1 minus 1 over 6 is 5 over 6. So if we multiply by 6 on the top and the bottom, we get that i times 1 over 5 is equal to 1. And what does that tell us that i is equal to? Well, it means that our integral must be equal to 5. And so by doing a nice summation involving the powers of 2, using this single identity that we've been given, we can say that if the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx equals 1, then that means the integral from 1 to 2 of f of x dx is equal to 5. I hope you've enjoyed that video. I think the reason this is such a nice problem is because we're not using any power rule or chain rule or integration by parts. We're just thinking and we're summing. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed and please let me know if you'd like me to cover anything else next. Thanks for watching. Bye.